Good morning and welcome to uh, morning devotions for the community of St. Andrews in Glenwood, Maryland. My name is Paul Beers and I will serve as leader today. If you are new to this service, know that you are welcome to participate fully. We are recording this service so that others can access it at any time convenient to them. Uh, let us begin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Lord, Lord open Lord. our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never <laughs> die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. We will now rehear a portion of Dr. Amy Jill Levine's book entitled Sermon on the Mount. Feel free to turn off your video, to take notes if you would like to or to pop comments and insights and connections into the chat box, which I will look at after I finish reading the text aloud. A reading this morning is a section called Be Perfect, Don't Panic. At the end of Matthew 5, Jesus states, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. He asks a lot. We can pray for our enemies. It's relatively easy to do in the sanctuary of, well, a sanctuary. In fact, such prayers can make us feel quite good about ourselves. He's asking for more. My mother took the next step. She told me always to be unfailingly nice, even to people who are nasty. You should always be a lady, she told me. That sounds so 1960s. Don't stoop to their level. That was also asking for a lot, but it could be done. And I admit to feeling pretty good about not repaying nastiness with more nastiness. Yet I still had that sense of self-satisfaction. I'm better than they are. And I got higher grades as well. Jesus is still asking for more. He instructs, act the way God would act. Act as if you fully recognize that your enemy is also in the image and likeness of God. The NRSV reads, be perfect, as if Jesus is issuing a command. Not quite. While that you is in a 
place of prominence and they and while and while the verb can function as an imperative the greek verb is not an imperative but a future indicative jesus states that if we will follow his instructions we will be perfect he is less giving a command than making a statement this teaching is no more and no less audacious than the Torah's teaching. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Leviticus 19.2 compared to 1 Peter 1 verse 16. The point is not that we are to be God, but that God set the standard for us. We are but a lower, a little lower than God. The Septuagint says in Psalm 8, 5, finding that verse too audacious, rewrote that to say, mortals are but a little lower than the angels. God sets a high standard for us. There is no better standard. At the same time, Jesus asked nothing of his disciples that he does not ask of himself. Finally, as always, we should be wary of translations. The Greek term, the NRSV, translates as to be perfect, is teleos, a form of the word telos, meaning complete. Anyone who has taken a theology or philosophy course is likely to be familiar with the term teleology, matters concerning purpose whether or of things uh, or people or of the world. In the Bible, the term rarely has the primary connotation of perfect in the sense of never doing anything wrong or incomplete. Nor is Jesus calling us to a type of perfectionism that would necessarily make us all neurotic. The term is probably best translated, not perfect, but complete. As we see in the NRSV's reading from James <laughs> verse one, uh, James one verse four, let endurance have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. In fact, the epistle of James is the best intertext for the Sermon of the Mount since it frequently repeats Jesus's sayings found in Matthew 5 through 7. James goes on to note, after advising that not many of you should become teachers, for you know that we who, te who teach will be judged with greater strictness. I should have paid more attention to that verse, that <laughs> all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking in, in speaking is perfect. James 3 verses 1 and 2. James is not saying that making mistakes is okay. To the contrary, he admits that we need to keep working on ourselves and we need to keep helping our neighbors since we are not yet perfect. To be perfect or complete is thus a goal. And because it is a goal, it is necessary part of a process. We may never get there, at least in this life. And that's okay, as long as we persevere, as long as the disciples keep their basic essence as salt and light. King Solomon, upon dedicating the temple in Jerusalem, proclaimed to the people, Therefore, devote yourselves completely to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments, as at this day, 1 Kings uh, chapter 8, verse 61. The Septuagint uses teleos for the term translated by the NRSV as completely, and the original Hebrew uh, reads shalem, which means whole or complete. The word is a cognate of the more familiar Hebrew term shalom, which is peace. This linguistic exercise <laughs> leads to both a challenge and comfort. 
The disciples are already blessed. They are already salt and light. They have the best model possible for continuing on the path to the kingdom of heaven. They are moving toward being complete and at peace. When I would bring home a paper with a grade of 100, my mother would smile at me and ask, you couldn't have gotten a 101? We are on our way, but we can always do better. It's the end of the reading. And I invite your, your questions or comments, observations. I like the word versus perfect or complete. I like how she had many terms for like perfect. Like she had perfect, she had complete, she had shalom. I like how there's not really like one specific way you have to be to, you know, to be like complete or to follow Christ. Like there's many different ways you can take to get to the same level. I thought that was pretty, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always struggle with the word perfect there. And uh, I do think complete is, and, and the thought that that's a process rather than an arrival point. It's something you, you work towards. After immersing myself in Joseph Campbell pandemic, I was kind of struck by what she said is that we are, we are lower than God. And in the Eastern tradition, we are a part of God. No, uh, there's this separation. There's a separation from God in, in um, Christianity, <clears throat> Judaism, both. And uh, I like the Orthodox way really better of thinking more that, that we're a part of God. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, Susan. I, I didn't. I don't like that part about kind of ranking ourselves and comparing ourselves to God. At even. Um, I mean, yeah, definitely. I feel like that's, that's also how a lot of corruption starts. Um, it's just kind of like twisting, twisting the overall message of what God has intended for us. And that's how like people get so like confused with like religion and everything, because I mean, truly we are one with God. And so many people preach that, you know, we are kind of worthless and God is everything. So we need to do everything to be with him and do all this and really, you know, loves us we are one with god so yeah amen yeah that was excellent joe get that down on paper <laughs> all right I'll, I'll definitely try to remember that <laughs> I am struck with that idea of being a teacher puts us at a higher place of judgment or something like that. I think I, I think I read, I think I heard that in there. Mm -hmm. I got to chew on that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Greater responsibility. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> <laughs> I liked her uh, linking um, the Beatitudes to uh, the book of James, too. Uh, I mean, James is a very action-focused person, and uh, this, and which the Beatitudes are to me action, action words as well. So uh, uh, to think of those two um, together, it's, uh, I find that helpful. Any other, any? Did anybody have a mother that would have said, why didn't you get 101? 
<laughs> I love that. Thankfully not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I thought that was great. I did have a mother that would tell me to um, be nice to, mm -hmm. you know, but not, I, I think the, um, the meaning behind it was niceness, you know, like it bugs them more than, than <laughs> responding and meaning. <meanness>. So <laughs> not be nice to be nice, but be nice to really <laughs> yeah. make the point. <laughs> That's good. I like that, Jim. <laughs> you know, Jan, I'm glad you said that because I feel like that's, that's like the third different sort of time that I feel like the word meek, you know, that meek shall inherit the earth. That, to me, that's another example of being, it's not, you know, it's what's meant by the word meek, even though meek's not a good word. Just, you know, <laughs> rising above it, you can't phase me. I got this, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, just, it's powerful. It's a powerful tool. I like the um, comment, and and I guess I in, in one of the, it, this uh, this quote from the book, and I I don't know whether it's from the Bible or her interpretation, but it says act as fully recognize that your enemy is also in the image and likeness of God. I think that's a member, you know, that everybody, you know, even our enemies are in the image and likeness of God. God has created everyone. Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like that's really strong. Sometimes, sometimes which is a bad habit of mine, sometimes I get in the habit of, whenever I feel like people are doing wrong, I'll be like, ah, well, you know, at least I'm, I'm with God. No, wait, like, oh, wait, they are in the image of God. So. Right. I like that too, the thought of um, a potter making uh, pottery and uh, sometimes uh, you have to reject a piece that goes, goes wrong. <laughs> I guess we're not allowed to do that. You shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> what would that look like? <laughs> okay. Any any final thoughts? Well, sometimes when I make a mistake with pottery, it turns out to be better than what I intended, though. So. Mm -hmm. There you go. Never know. Never know what's going to happen. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Share screen? Yep. It's back. <laughs> okay. Let us. Uh, Let us affirm our faith by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in you, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Oops. Let us pray. <laughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Let us pray. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Are there any uh, prayer requests this morning that you would like to uh, offer? For Kate, Mary, Amanda, and Sandy. For Kenneth and Jane. For Lisa. For Dina, Mike Looney, and everyone in the Hogar program. For Ella, who's still recovering from COVID, and for my mom, who's getting ready to move after 55 years. <clears throat> Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Paul.